Pierre, uh, welcome to the show. My name is Kevin Davani. I'm the host of the Kevin Davani Connection Show, and I've had you know uh, so many other Bitcoiners on my show. And to be honest, I mean, uh, if it wasn't for uh, G Summit, I think that was, that's its Twitter handle. Uh, I wouldn't have stumbled mm -hmm. upon you, to be honest with you. So, uh, but since you know you already uh, are in talk with um, uh, also with Samson Mao, Omai also we are cooperate with. Um, um, why don't you give us uh, or my listeners, viewers, uh, just a short background about yourself. What was the inspiring uh, moment or what was it that inspired you to make these great, great reset films? What was the trigger? Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, th thanks for having me. It's great to meet you and uh, great to, you know, be able to present myself to everyone that's uh, listening to that. Um, so I, uh, you know, I used to be a tech consultant, so uh, I like Bitcoin was just working for big corporations, automating their processes, data analysis, this kind of stuff, and um, was going nowhere in terms of uh, uh, Bitcoin projects. There was really no perspective possible. I kept on talking about it with my boss, you know, saying, okay, was there this and that coming? There were some initiatives, but in fact, nothing there. You know, it was just a, a kind of like, carrot for the donkey you know just stuff that could allow you to you know do some presentations and show that you have knowledge you know to the people from the company so i quickly lost interest in that and um uh, uh and after a while i thought okay i mean it's enough like uh there's bitcoin that i'm so passionate about that is so important for the future of our world according to me uh that uh staying at my job isn't going to get me closer to doing something in bitcoin so i just uh quit uh, it was a bit of a, a sudden decision, especially for my managers. I had just started a new project, and so it wasn't a good timing, but it never is a good timing. And um, yeah, and so it took me three months, you know, kind of just learning more about Bitcoin, uh, just thinking, what can I do? I have a bunch of different skills, you know, I, like I'm also a developer, so I, I thought maybe that's the way I could go, learn all the technicals of uh, bit, developing with Bitcoin and maybe add value that way. But um, yeah, I think uh, that's also something that didn't work for me after leaving my job. I just didn't want to get back to coding. So I was always into filmmaking, you know, and, uh, and I thought maybe I can make a documentary myself. And so um, I just started working on this uh, alone and I realized that actually I had a pretty good story going on and I just uh, kept on developing the story further until I made the film The Great Reset and The Rise of Bitcoin, um, which was released uh, on January 5th. So it took me about seven months to do the whole thing. And uh, and after release, uh, um, yeah, it was just a lot of Twitter, you know, spamming, I call it, just uh, reaching out to as many people as possible so they could share this. And uh, then we reached uh, last month over a million views in total. So uh, really amazing success. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. thank you. Yeah, way beyond, uh, you know, the original objectives I had. So it's, uh, it's really cool. And it's great because it allows for... Well, for me to join the Bitcoin community and for Bitcoiners to get back to me, especially, you know, other filmmakers and uh, people that just wanted to work together somehow at some point. And when I was in El Salvador, I spent a month there in March and uh, I met Samson Mao. And through conversation, uh, you know, he gave me an idea for a new film, <laughs> and uh, which is uh, the fight for the U.S. dollar. Um, and the, really, the conversation that I had with Sam now was about um, how he has experienced um, the, the blocking from the U.S., pressure from the U.S. in Central America when it came to adopting Bitcoin there and all the conversations he had with the different governments there. And so that's where the conversation started going. And, and then eventually, you know, we, like we just thought, man, like there's no documentary about this that would explain the, the context of uh, the US influence in Central America in particular, but I plan on studying the entire world and, uh, um, and putting it in context today with what's happening with Bitcoin, right? Because we're, uh, that's what the video that you showed at the beginning explained is the fact that we're at, we're at a turning point. The US dollar is at risk. We, we're not sure if it's going to hold its status of, uh, uh, you know, global reserve currency. And if it doesn't, then maybe 
Bitcoin could could be this next thing, and it's definitely scary to governments. So it's logical for them to try and block it. Uh, but what I want to be sure to uh, explain in the film is that actually blocking Bitcoin is blocking freedom, whether it's individual freedom or the sovereignty of an entire nation, like we can see in El Salvador. Um, yeah, and so that's uh, you know that's that's where and I that's to get all of this together and uh, trying to produce articles and videos to get people around this topic, you know, and build the right community uh, and get the right funding for it. This is fantastic. Uh, Pierre, you know, uh, when you, um, for me, for my perspective, like making a movie, making a film, uh, would it be documentary, even like a mixed genre of maybe even, a, you know, a genre, uh, something between, uh, play movie or documentary, whatever effect like is intended. Like, what is the what is the intention behind it? Like, what what do you intend to do? Uh, because I mean, I I know where where, it, where it's going, but um, my question is like, uh, whom do you want to reach? Who, what people have you reached outside? You know, the, the groups or the communities uh, in and around Bitcoin or let's just say freedom seeking people. Uh, have you gotten like uh, received any feedback like from people outside our let's say our circles? Yeah, so that's the difficult thing, isn't it? Because um, so I knew uh, when making my first film, I knew that um, by producing the right content um, in the right form, that Bitcoiners would share it. And so I knew I had an audience for that if I do the right marketing work behind it, right? And that was easy, let's say. Now, one thing that's kind of important is that the majority of the views that I had on YouTube they came from the YouTube algorithm. So it wasn't even, you know, Twitter, Bitcoin Magazine, all of these that were sharing this on Twitter. It was just the YouTube algorithm and how I managed to hack it, I guess. <laughs> and um, so for me, this is a, a sign of, you know, going beyond just the Bitcoin space. Uh, that's that's for one, because it's just people that are just interested in the topic, you know, they're, they're just, you know, because half of the film isn't even about Bitcoin. You have to watch half of the film to even like, have the word Bitcoin appear. So that's, you know, a lot of it explains the context of our economy and inflation. And this concerns anyone, whoever, even if you're not interested in Bitcoin. After that, I tried to really approach it so that anyone could understand it. So not just for Bitcoiners, um, you know, to just kind of orange pill at scale. That's what I was always saying. And, um, uh, but but at the same time, uh, you know, I was making a film. It was the first time I was making a film. It was maybe the last time I was going to make a film. So I went all in and I thought, well, I have to have a budget for film festivals and, and such. And uh, and my film was selected to a couple of film festivals, including one. Um, there's the Sunscreen Film Festival, which is the biggest independent film uh, festival in uh, Florida, in the region of Tampa in St. Petersburg. So, um, you know, there, there was no Bitcoiners at all. Uh, I went to the festival, I, I was there, there was a screening of my film. Um, there was a Q and A afterwards that went on forever because everyone just wanted to understand Bitcoin a bit better, you know, because no one knew it. And, um, and that, that was great because they really um, showed that if it's interesting and presented the right way as professional as possible, then there's an audience beyond Bitcoiners. Now Bitcoiners, sure, it's the kind of community that just absorbs so much content whenever there's something new like uh, you know you have to watch it, you have to know it uh so it gives this you know base audience that you know is going to be there the only tricky part is how do you make a, how do you build a story and market it in a way that it can go beyond that but that's um yeah, that's that's the uh, you know that's why quality is all that matters. Yeah, you know the reason I'm asking is because um, uh, I want you. I mean, I really, I really want you to be to uh, to you know to to, uh, to be successful and to be impactful, to be effective. And I think it's a lot of multifactorial elements, you know, playing in this. It's because you. Ha I love your approach, and from my perspective, you just. I mean, you're just amazing. You know, from your educational, rational, logical, and, and, and let's say, you know, uh, intellectual approach, you know, but I'm just, I'm just trying always to put myself into the shoes of other people, uh, you know, who don't, who don't have the patience or the time, or maybe the pain point hasn't been reached. But I think because you said in the beginning, you know, we, we are at the turning point or something like that, or a tipping point. So maybe everything is just culminating together. And by the time you will release your next great resale film, uh, 
um, um, sorry, what was it called again? Um, not the rise. Well, the, fight for the, US dollar, the, yeah. the fight for the U.S. dollar. By that time, I'm hoping, and I'm and I'm very pretty, let's say, uh, convinced that by that time, you know, the pain point of uh, let's say of a of a critical mass of people will be reached. And then, you know, people will open up. So you will reach them not only on intellectual, mental, whatever, educational and very knowledge level and, you know, connecting the dots because it takes a lot, you know, of, 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 of intellectual processing, I think, you know, you, uh, that's why, you know, I love the way you do it because you don't mention, you know, as you said, until the, the middle of the movie uh, or the film Bitcoin, it's all about, it's like, you know, Safed Anamuz with this book, you know, with, there's a Bitcoin standard, you know, a standard book, like, um, it's it's like uh, half or even three quarters of the book is uh, hardly any mention of Bitcoin, right? So once people you know understand like aha aha aha, this is the pain point. This these are the root causes. These are the connections I have to connect. These are the dots I have to connect and stuff like that. And then I think people open up, you know, and then they can absorb. And then they and then eventually at the end. Um, I mean, I don't know how you're going to do this at the, uh, the end of the movie, but like to trigger them, to inspire them, to uh, somehow move them, motivate them to take action, because that's yeah, you know, human so, action, yeah. also like in Austrian economics, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know if uh, maybe you watched a, sh it's a short film on YouTube. It's called Bitcoin is Generational Wealth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, I'm sure I think it's 16 minutes, but it's very uh, inspiring as to the long term benefits that a world with Bitcoin could look like. And that's an inspiration that I have for this, the, the, the ending part of it, you know, because um, once you show them, okay, what's, uh, what the US has done historically, what other powers have done historically in the same kind of way, which is controlling, uh, you know, financial markets and, and the monetary system as far as they could beyond their own territory, um, then explain what's happening today with Bitcoin, after that, explain, you know, Bitcoin is freedom and people shouldn't be enemies of Bitcoin because I mean, they're the enemies of freedom. And then there has to be an opening as to, it has to be hopeful, you know, because if, if the whole theme is, um, I, I think it's quite negative, you know, talking about just what, what exposing what's happening in the world and how certain people in power <laughs> are <impressive>. taking <laughs> control. Of people. Yeah, right. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's heavy. It's very heavy. And so, that's not what Bitcoin is about, right? Bitcoin is about the opposite of that. That's literally why it was created. Now, of course, you know, we have to be able to uh, explain the whole story to people so that they understand that Bitcoin was created for that purpose, right? Because when, when people think about Bitcoin, they think about, oh, that's just like a get rich scheme, yeah? which it isn't. And that's that's a big detachment that people have to make. It's uh, no, it's, it's, you know, it's about freedom money. It's about controlling your own, funds and not having them disappear because of inflation or because someone decides to take control over your own money. Like, so it's, um, you know, th th there has to be this hopeful part of it because that's, this is what Bitcoin is about. I think, um, the thing is that, you know, you have to be able to, in order to pass this message, you need to be able to tap into the individual emotions of the viewer, uh, so that they can understand the impact of it and the message that you have will just, you know, hit them in the face. Yeah. And in fact, um, if, I, if I can add, there's the director of the film Bitcoin is Generational Wealth that is uh, executive producer for my uh, project. <laughs> so, the, you know, if, if I try and build that story, uh -huh. I'm definitely going to make it because I'm going to have his, uh, you know, his backing as well. And uh, so, you know, and, and also one last point regarding this, um, when we're talking about, you know, spreading this to beyond the Bitcoin world or the freedom world. Um, so the this guy Matt Hornick, Hornick joining as executive producer, he has a, a, a film production company, and he is joining the project with his company, meaning he had to convince his partners that are not Bitcoiners to join into that project, right? So that's you know just uh, that's the small kind of trickle down effects, you know, the ripple effects maybe of uh, how the non-Bitcoin things, you know, I mean, the Bitcoin world can spread into the non-Bitcoin non world. Yeah, 
And they must have seen, uh, you know, the potential or whatever the effect or the value, maybe the, the values that you, sh you share, you know, whatever the yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, in the end, what they're backing is the hard work that I managed to put before that, right? Of course. I see. Okay. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was always thinking because you said uh, film festivals, um, because uh, I think it it has an effect somehow. You know, it, it 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 does it does something with the with the you know with the audience with the branding with. Uh, um, there's also this Sundance Film Festival. I think is it isn't isn't it from Red, Robert Redford? Uh, um, people can even you know submit all kinds of independent movies documentaries. Yeah. So that would be great. I think you would have a great chance. I mean, that's my opinion, but. Uh... Yeah, that's, the, I mean, that's that's the objective, you know, like uh, um, to just do the best quality film possible. And sorry, <laughs> to make the best, the best quality uh, film possible and then spread it as far as possible. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is through film festivals because film festivals allow to find distributors. Yeah. So, uh, and, and this way, you know, it can be put on other platforms because uh, it's, it's, you know, it's great that I can have this amount of views on YouTube, but it has to go beyond that. It's, uh, you know, the, the end goal is to be able to have the film on Netflix or on the big streamers because whenever such documentaries come out on these platforms, they're watched instantly. I mean, Netflix made documentaries cool again, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, it, and it's the kind of thing if presented properly is going to be a success on that platform too. Yeah? And it allows to reach other people that don't necessarily research Bitcoin. And it'll just be in their face and uh, they'll, they'll watch it. So um, it's, uh, it's important to be able to do the top quality. But for that, you know, we need money. And that's what efforts yeah. I'm putting in yeah. to try and, and raise the funds for that. Yeah, and I'm hoping, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of people would contribute to that. You know, as you are probably, you know, doing this through the Geis, is it called Geiser Fund? Is that Geiser, what you yeah. want to talk about this a little bit? The Geiser Fund. Yeah, sure. So it's, um, it's, I think, really cool. I mean, you, you know, the concept of Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So they're doing the same thing, but it's uh, only on Bitcoin, and uh, so all the contributions are Bitcoin based in sets, and you can either donate through the Lightning Network through or on chain, uh, and uh, you know, it allows for people to. I mean, one person did a one sat contribution, for example. Yeah, which. I mean, first off, I mean, there's two points to that. First off, it's crazy that you can do one SAT transfer. Like that's amazing, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's not only it's only possible with Bitcoin, right? Like it's uh, I find it amazing because it's what it's like uh, one four thousand of a dollar. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> it's, uh, so um, yeah, very very cool. And um, and on top of that, you know, it allows for a person that just wants to because you know there's multiple KPIs when you're raising uh, money. There's either number one. Uh, the amount that you're actually raising, or number two, uh, the amount of people that contributed. Now, I want to try and focus mostly on the second point, the amount of contributors. Yeah. So giving one set is the equivalent of giving, giving zero, but it's an important KPI to show that there's more people backing it. You know, if we're able to have 10,000 people backing it, then, uh, you know, it really shows that it's worth it because the budget to make i mean making films is very expensive yeah and yeah. especially when it involves traveling when it involves animations the proper music you know maybe uh, someone a star that can do the right voice and so on yeah um, and so the budget we're at around four hundred thousand dollars that we're trying to raise mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure we're not gonna be you know in the film business that's peanuts actually right yes 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 of course, it's of course. like that's... lowest lowest budget i mean that's... yeah I mean, yeah, you, yeah. It's very you really low want to do a proper you know professional <laughs> effective film or movie it, it's it's just even if it's a small scale you know it's it it, yeah. it takes a lot of logistics resources you know yeah and a lot of professionals that can really because it's only pros that can take this to the pro level and these pros i mean you have to pay them and you know all the all the people that are going to be involved in the project they're all bitcoiners and they all just want to be part of it they're some of the people that reached out to me after my first film and uh they, i mean they're you know either doing it pro bono or almost you know half their normal pay and like they just want to be involved in a in a bitcoin project which is which is awesome. I mean, they really like the story that I'm trying to put forward. Uh, they like the the way I'm building this community, and you know, for them, it's motivating and it's more important than just earning their money. This they can build their regular clients for that. You know.
So uh, yeah, and so you know, Geyser is uh, is is the right way to have this proof of community. You know, be able to demonstrate. Look, there's so many people that want this film to happen. We already know we have this amount of viewers. There's a clear interest. You know, like, and we're, if we're capable of having it being one of the biggest projects on Geyser, then you know, it like it speaks so much to uh, to Bitcoiners that could be the ones to potentially fund that. Uh, you know, some private investors uh, and uh, uh, that would just give bigger, bigger amounts, you know. So and they would, of course, do it mostly through, uh, you know, um, an investment, you know, so business model and with the hopes of maybe if there is the right uh, traction and distribution, getting some profits out of it. Mm. So there's kind of, you know, two spaces, two two areas of the fundraising. There's the, the geyser campaign on one side, which is the community. And then there's the investor, uh, um, you know, individual investors that, that I'm trying to uh, to also reach out to. Yeah. And yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we can we can discuss this maybe privately, but I just want to maybe connect you with some people. I know my, my best friend, she's now, you know, in Austria and she's very well connected, you know, to all kinds of producers and uh, even from Hollywood. But, you know, a lot of people that went away from Hollywood to do their own thing. Right. So I'm thinking maybe these people would be willing, not because of whatever uh, monetary reasons or you know profitability reasons, but really, I'm, I'm thinking of people of who would do it out of uh, you know because of the vision, because of the mission, because of the ethical reasons. You know the the the, the, the you know. Um, um, well, I mean, if ever you know, there's any contact that can help. That's uh, oh, definitely yeah, yeah. I, 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 want, you, yeah, I really want you to to make this more effective, and because um, I think. Um, you know, you are, you are, I mean, you're doing really uh, God's work, you know, I mean, this is, this. I know it, this is a lot of work. I mean, I've, I've, I've spent some time, I even played in a small movie and I know, you know, how these things work in the background and it takes a lot of resource, a lot of time, a lot of, you know, energy. Uh, so, you know, whatever, you know, whether it's me or anybody else, I think, uh, if people can contribute in, in whatever shape or form, whether it be monetary or, or, or financial or, uh, you know, networking connections or uh, any kind of, you know, technical even uh, uh, expertise. So um, you, you mentioned, uh, because, you know, you, I know you've been going, you know, a lot of rabbit holes up here. Mm -hmm. And now that you've done, you know, you've already accomplished, you know, this this first part, you know, the, 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 the rise of Bitcoin, um, and I know you've, you know, you've talked to Samson and you, and, and it seems like you've stumbled upon some things that, uh, that might not be at least not mainstream, you know, not, not really, uh, generally not, you know, uh, knowledgeable about, uh, is there like when you, when you mentioned Samson, you know, talking to you, how, uh, would it be El Salvador or other Central American countries being suppressed or, uh, maybe even, you know, being put under pressure, let's like just say, intimidated or something like that. Was that something like, is that a factor or an aspect that you can talk about? Like, is that something you could also elaborate in your, in the, in the next, in this next uh, movie or film? Yeah, so that's that's the point. That's what I want to do for, for the next film. Right, if you want, I can share one story with the, um, with, with the person I had a call with, uh, he's from El Salvador, I had a call with him a, a few weeks ago, because what I'm doing now, you know, is reaching out and trying to find all of these stories right uh, because that, that's what we need you know of course uh, i'm gonna go around and interview people and i already have uh, some people lined up that can share a lot of the, these you know topics um but uh, but uh, in the process of um uh, you know creating this community and getting people on board I have a team of researchers that uh, you know are looking for information uh, around these topics and we want to produce articles that we can share on our platform this way it allows us to build our own research you know library and it allows us to share this for the community and there's a reason to follow it you know like uh, um, not only contributing but also just being there and following the topic as we move forward so i'm reaching out to, to a bunch of people and there's a pretty interesting uh, um, story that we still need to study a bit more so i can only give you the you know the beginnings we'll have an entire article around that um it's uh this person was telling me how he has always worked in fintech in el salvador uh and when the bitcoin law was passed he well, decided to i mean i'm in fintech i should transition to bitcoin because that's what's going to come to the country you know so that's what he did he has a great network and he set up his company and after setting up his company, well, he had to create a bank account. 
And it was impossible for him to create a bank account in El Salvador because every single bank was rejecting it because he was a Bitcoin company, right? So Bitcoin is legal tender and it, you know, we're supposed to bring business and so on, but the banks were not accepting it because it was too much risk, you know, this Bitcoin thing. Right? And he only managed to open a bank account through one of the you know, government backed banks that exist there. And they, it took him three months to do it, even through that government backed bank, right? So forever, but he managed because, you know, the government was backing it. They said Bitcoin is legal. Then they, I mean, it's, you know, the fact that he's a Bitcoin company is not good enough an argument to, to, to block it, right? And so what, what's happening is that there, it's not necessarily a direct um, blocking from the US, you know, that uh, is trying to defend the US dollar. It's rather the established banks from the world and the organizations, international organizations that they have that are setting their rules. Now, of course, you know, who manages these banks? They're very close with all the top governments and so on, sure, right? Uh, but what happens is that they have different um, groups that they want to belong to because it allows them to more easily do international transactions, uh, get in, you know, uh, international funding, uh, uh, investment, all these things. And they have to follow certain rules or they're kicked out of this, uh, uh, this you know, this group uh, of banks, in which case they lose their business, in fact, right? They're limited to only what's happening in their country. And that's just not good enough. So it can be blocked at such a high level that it's even hard to understand who's doing it. Uh, and that's part of the things that we want to investigate. You know, we want to take a look at, okay, so what are all the different banking organizations? Which ones work in which uh, region? Have they uh, put some new rules when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto in general? But, you know, of course, we focus on Bitcoin. And uh, when did these rules appear? And, uh, you know, just doing a, a deep dive into... Um, how the established bank network of the world are themselves putting wheels uh, in the, sorry, sticks in the wheel yeah, of, uh, of Bitcoin to just uh, lower the, the adoption. Um, so I think that's, you know, the kind of uh, interesting uh, stories that will come out of all of this because uh, it doesn't have to be directly the U.S. government that is taking action. Yeah? Uh, what Samson Mao described to me was that when he was exiting a meeting with, uh, you know, someone from the government, whether it was in Guatemala, Honduras, or El Salvador, there was uh, pretty much at each time someone from an intelligence agency from the U.S. that was there waiting at the door for when the meeting was over. Um, and it would be very interesting to be able, you know, to get in touch with one of these people, like basically understand, like. What are they trying to reach there? Are they just trying to understand what's happening and what do their bosses think? You know, what's the goal behind it? And uh, and there's a a lot of yeah, I think deep research to to be done with that. And uh, and we're just starting now. In fact, we just started last week with the Geyser campaign that started. We got together as a team and we're like, okay, we got to produce content. It's time to like get going. We're in pre-production phase. Uh, so, you know, more to come on that. We're, uh, wow, it's really, really very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, this this exact this is exactly what you're talking about is this is exactly what's missing uh, in, in this is the lack of knowledge or the lack of comprehension. What's really going on behind the scenes, like connecting the dot. I think if you can accomplish this, like giving people, you know, even just the layman or the average person a bigger picture, a comprehensive picture, a, you know, a picture where people can finally, for the first time, maybe even in their lifetime, connect the dots and understand mm -hmm. the root causes. I mean, this is something really you don't, you know, you don't learn that in school, uh, not to mention, you know, you know, all these brainwashing universities or any other uh, academic institutions or anything. It's just you need to do a lot of digging, a lot of researching. It takes a lot of, uh, yeah, uh, Heart, you know, sweat and blood, or whatever you call it. So it takes a lot of time and energy to, uh, and, and and really willingness and openness and open mindedness to uh, to to absorb this and then process it and then uh, and then eventually come to the conclusion there is no other solution. This is a one shot we have, uh, and that's Bitcoin, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. 
You know, I tried to, uh, um, I did uh, gather some people together like a year ago. We had a group even on Telegram uh, with lots of people like Daniel Prince, a lot of, you know, Bitcoin, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, one of them was, I know, Knut Swalham, there were lots of them. And uh, and I tried like to just to, you know, as a, a sort of a brainstorming or a conceptual uh, round, like to, to get people to brainstorm. And, and they eventually Knut Swalham did something with Yoni Appelberg. You know, he did those animations. Maybe you know this guy from Sweden. He does yeah. this like yeah. short, really great Bitcoin. Anime. But I was thinking really more of a mixed genre between play movie and documentary just for the purpose of, of picking up or what do, you, what do you call it? Like to inspire to to uh, to to wake up the, the average person out there to the average people, uh, yeah. you know, outside the eco chamber of of libertarians, Bitcoiners or what have you, freedom seekers, you know, just just uh, average people who are working hard <laughs> from nine to five and, you know, have no time to research, have, you know, they they just too indoctrinated by mainstream media. And this this is the, the, the systemic problem we have, you know, whether we talk about the monetary system or the, this whole COVID uh, or uh, CO2 hoax or, or climate hoax. You know what I mean, where I'm going with this, but uh, it's, I think it's an art. And I think, you know, I consider you as an artist, you as a creator, uh, maybe on a different level, you know, on a very, uh, when it's you, because you're, you know, you're, you're processing and you're communicating, you're gathering and processing information, knowledge and, 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 and you know, and, and dots. And, and I think it's, it's really a, a craftsmanship. It's, it's an art. And I think, you know, all these uh, artists like you have, a, uh, and I wish more people like you would, would, ha would, would take upon their social responsibility. I think it's a social responsibility to do these kind of things, not just for the sake of doing art, but really for the sake of, of, of having an effect on, on, on our lives and our civilization, our future and our children, you know, uh, on this whole fucked up criminal system we are in. I mean, it's so it's still an under, understatement if I stay cr criminal sometimes, I have the feeling. But um, because once you go really deep into the, all these rabbit holes, you know how fucked up and criminal this whole I mean, matrix is, uh, but you know, people, we need to put on the silk gloves and I know this is the, this is the right approach you're taking. You're taking it very slowly, rationally, logically, you're putting off silk gloves and just, uh, very gently touching them. Like, you know, this is, this is, this is the reality. Okay. Yeah. And you got to deal with it. And I think, uh, it's, it's a, it's a challenge. I just wanted to say, you know, I think it's a admirable challenge you're taking upon yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm hoping really that you're going to have a really effect on people, you know, outside of our eco chambers, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. And that, you know, as you say, that's the challenging part, because with all of these topics, you're so close to being flagged as a conspiracy theorist. And, you know, like it's... Um, that's horrible. That's the worst kind of because for for many this is like once they think you're a conspiracy theorist, they're just gonna say that as an argument and they're gonna stop listening to what you're saying. And I mean, I get it. Sure, like you know, I don't think that's the right approach, uh, you know, to conversations or to educating yourself. But I understand that people can can block themselves like that, and that's why you have to be able to build the story in a way that doesn't put you in that box, right? Because like, you, then you get censored, no one wants to watch it, and your reputation takes a hit to do anything outside of the community you're in. So it's, it's a thin line and you have to be able to, to balance it. And uh, that's why writing something like that is, uh, is complicated. And that's why I need to rely on a bunch of people behind it. Because, uh, you know, for my first film, I think it was, it was easier, you know, it's just, presenting hard data that is really out there when it comes to the more um, uh, investigative journalism that is going to take place for this second project, then you can't do this alone. It's, it's impossible. Uh, first off, you may get locked into your own biases and, uh, and also there's just too much information out there. So uh, yeah, so the way we're actually planning to do it is there's uh, so five writers, including me, uh, and uh, right now, we're all kind of just doing research on whatever kind of topics we find interesting around that. And, uh, and eventually, we'll just move on to each person writes a part of the story for a particular you know, theme that we know we want to cover in the film. And then together, we review it. And then all together, the five of us, we just 
put it in the right order, whatever seems the most chronological to us. Uh, and so, you know, so we need a lot of info for all of that. So we're working on this early and uh, and we want to invite the community as much as possible for that. I mean, on our blog uh, that we started so just last week, uh, we're going to post articles pretty much every week. Uh, I have a contact in Bitcoin Magazine too, and we're going to send them every week and they're going to publish most of them if we give the right value to it. Uh, the first one is coming out next week and um, which is pretty much the one from the video. It's the same thing. Uh, and um, yeah, and just uh, uh, get other people to, if they want to do research about this kind of topic because they find it great, they can just send it to us and we will post it on our blog and it'll be part of our library, you know, the kind of content that we're going to then be able to use to build the whole the whole story, right? So we started a Telegram group, actually, I saw you joined it, uh, where the goal of it is to um, share information there uh, where... Um, you know, anyone can learn, of course, what kind of things we're looking at, the articles we're looking at, and so on, and maybe also engage into a deeper conversation and have the whole community share any other resources they could find, you know, so that we know we can add it to our list, we'll check it out, and it'll be part of our research. So that's, uh, you know, just a way to really invite the community and be able to, you know, narrow down the information, uh, but by having as much information as possible processed by the whole community. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, no, that's great. That's a that's a fantastic approach, um, and I, I love it. You know, when the community can involve themselves and and you know, uh, with it be brainstorming or bring in ideas or maybe you know bring in some facets or aspects. And you know, as I, to I just told you about uh, this this group that we had, and for me personally, it was important. Like, I was like, okay, when we talk about society or civilization or you know humanity or people outside, you know, our our eco chambers, they just can't even imagine they can't even fathom like what it could be i we can't we can't because you know when when i read for the first time you know safed and Amos book the bitcoin standard and he he talked about this la belle époque right i think it's french you know the time when it was like a gold standard whatever like hard money you know um i was like could we even imagine you know i mean first of all how how much have we lost at least in the, within the last hundred years not only monetary financially and existentially but also technological wise um, you know, prosperity, abundance, which Jeff Booth also talks about. I mean, I hope that Jeff Booth is going to be one of your <laughs> um, guests who's going to speak on that. And I, th and I think there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of people out there who could uh, like really bring in a very succinct picture of what the what a Bitcoin, a hyper Bitcoinized world, you know, Samsung Mao, you know, from Gen Three is working for the acceleration of hyper Bitcoinization, and I'm always, you know, in my back, in the back of my brain, I'm like, uh, can people even imagine what life, what society, what uh, the structural things can look like in our world? We, we can't, and I can't even, you know, uh, I mean, I have a lot of imagination. I know there's a lot of technologies, there's a lot of abundance, prosperity, there's a lot of comfort we could get. With a, in a, within a hyper Bitcoinized world, I can't even imagine you know, how what El Salvador El Salvador could look like um, under Bukele and you know with a, with a total legal tender thing uh, in ten and twenty years. But is that like an aspect you're thinking maybe about like giving them at least uh, just a few minutes a glimpse of not not like sci-fi or you know utopian stuff, but I'm like uh, maybe a realistic approach like what could the daily the day to day life for an average person look like in a hyper bitcoinized world because isn't that what we are actually striving for yeah so and for sure right that's uh, that's part of you know when i was mentioning an opening similar to bitcoin is generational wealth because it's a uh, um, again, that's the hopeful part, and it shows the. So I think one of the more more important parts uh, to try and get through, because basically we're talking about Bitcoin culture, because that's what it is. We don't know what it could be, but we put information together that makes us believe in a potential future, right? And we as Bitcoiners, we like, you know, we agree on these uh, on these ideas. Maybe not all of them, because there's also some, you know, kind of crazy stuff in the Bitcoin world. But, you know, the 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 one that I think matters the most is the this long-term kind of perspective. The And I think this is what you can very easily transfer to people. It's a very easy concept to understand, and it's fairly easy to uh compare um, our short-term thinking today, explain where it comes from and how a lot of it comes from our money and say that, well, Bitcoin doesn't work like that. And it could allow for 
long-term thinking in every aspect of our society. Right? And then it opens up to, well, what aspects of our society? Well, energy, you know, uh, the right uh, diet, the right, you know, way of producing agriculture, all these things, you know, the avoiding these huge uh, um, groups of, uh, um, like, you know, food companies, I forgot what, what's the name of their industry, you know, and then getting back to the real, um, what it means to be a human being, you know, I think that's the, the kind of opening that, that is needed, because especially, you know, in a world where now, like, the top like topics are metaverse like bullshit and like i mean you know we have to get back to the basics and i think it's important to uh be able to explain to people that uh you know we understand that because of inflation everything is super expensive you can't hope to buy land so you're going to buy some land in the metaverse but that's not what it means to be a human being <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's getting really grotesque and bizarre. Uh, this whole, uh, you know, metaverse, whatever it's called, uh, it's 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 yeah, it's it's mind-boggling. Uh, uh, um, this whole culture that's been this it's, it's almost like yeah, it's an artificial culture that's been it's been propagated and and you know, uh, uh, of course, financed uh, in the background. It's with with whatever intentional agendas behind it. Um, with all this, you know, woke, woke culture, whatever we want to call it, or uh, um, uh, all this, you know, energy, uh, like CO2 uh, agenda behind it, you know, I mean, uh, but not for, not for the, but not for them, but, but for us sort of. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's it just, I think it's it, people, uh, most people think it's for the first time, like understanding what's been stolen from us, like it, mm -hmm. still being systematically stolen from us, time, energy, uh, monetary value or, or economics or uh, existences or health uh, or technology, you know, on every level we can think, can think of. And, and, you know, I know this is, uh, I have to, Sometimes uh, I talk about this a lot in my in my podcast. Like, what kind of other technologies could you know uh, be developed or is already developed but could be released and 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 eventually you know help a society um, you know have more have a more uh, comfortable life where people have more time to do the the things that they really love. You know, so you know Jeff Booth also also talks about like. Uh, uh, we eventually we're gonna live in a world where people are gonna maybe live, uh, you know, uh, work uh, 10, 15 hours a week, but voluntarily because they do it out of passion because they really love to contribute back to society. And I think we need to, and, and you, you know, I need to, I don't need to tell you there's there's billions of people out there who have a job who hate their jobs, who hate their jobs. And I know personally people, you know, who who are they, you know, they make good money even, you know, in fiat terms, but but they just hate their jobs. So what kind of you know life is this? So I think uh, on every level we can think of, you know, whether it be mentally, psychologically, emotionally, structurally, technologically, everything will change. And I think this is something that cannot be, you know, emphasized enough. Yeah. No, I agree. And uh you know, I'm very curious and I tried to put some thought into this, you know, I'm just not technical enough, I think, but it's a, uh, what kind of, um, so I think a lot of um, the technologies that could potentially, you know, uh, come to be created that could solve a lot of the problems we have, I think that, you know, a lot of it could uh, be backed by Bitcoin in some way. And like, to, I can even give you an example from a conversation I had earlier with my girlfriend. So. Um, we we're talking about TikTok and apparently somewhat recently TikTok uh, changed their algorithm for whatever reason. And um, there's profiles that have hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, I'm not sure what they do, right? But, you know, when you have this size of a profile, you base your business decisions on that, right? There's a way it works. There's a certain reach that you have and your business works thanks to that. Um, all of a sudden, some of these profiles, they're getting, you know, 300 views after a few hours, which is... Not, I mean, it has nothing to do with how their profiles used to work, right? And that's only based on the fact that TikTok decided to change the algorithm, you know? And that's one of the factors that you can't change in Bitcoin, you know? You can't just like, I mean, the, the amount of effort that is needed to change the Bitcoin protocol and, you know, make sure that it works differently is huge, right? Can't this somehow uh, be applied elsewhere thanks to the... Bitcoin technology, like, uh, you know, that's the, the, you know, the kind of idea that I think uh, eventually is going to 
come uh, and it's going to be made so much easier thanks to the lightning network and uh, and, and other you know layer two uh, uh, networks of the, the sort um, but it's interesting thoughts so that's for sure you know the the impact that could that there could be thanks to bitcoin i think you're on mute Oh, sorry. Yeah, Pierre, when it comes to nation state Bitcoin adoption, which is you know, uh, uh, the mission of, of, of Jan3 and, and Samson Mao, uh, what do you think? I mean, is that like, uh, would that be part of the of the movie too? Like, are you planning or do you, is that some idea like maybe in your head, like to, to talk to people who want to take the initiative, who might be decision makers or not, who might have some influence in specific countries? Would it be Peru or I don't know some other Central American countries or smaller countries, bigger countries. Is that something that you want to weave into the movie, or is that? Uh... No, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, the um, I'm mostly going to focus on Central America, but not only right. So Central America, because I mean, obviously El Salvador has adopted it, adopted Bitcoin um, as legal tender. Honduras, we see that, you know, they have uh, like a Prospera, you know, this individual, like a uh, independent city that wants to be a Bitcoin city. There's uh, this in town, you know, news from a couple of weeks ago that in order to attract tourism, they're starting to accept Bitcoin. Like, so it's happening there, basically. And it's a lot inspired by, you know, the success that El Salvador has had since the Bitcoin adoption. I guess there's different KPIs you can take a look at there. But I mean, you know, the tourism in particular, which is what they're trying to, you know, to reach there. And, uh, and of course, you know, El Salvador is starting it and given the influence of the president um, and the objective that he has of a, a certain reunification of Central America so that they become uh, better business partners in general. Um, I think this is, this is where it's, it's happening, you know, and uh, that's where I want to focus. And I don't want to only focus on El Salvador, but I want to also interview people from Honduras, from Guatemala, and as many as I can, in fact, including from Mexico, uh, uh, this would be Indira Kempis and uh, hopefully Ricardo Salinas. Uh, these are, uh, you know, people that uh, Samson Mao told me he can, you know, have uh, he can reach out to and have them join the project. Likely, of course, maybe right. Uh, and Samson Mao himself will be there to be able to explain his. Uh, vision his experience spreading all of this and including the troubles that he may be facing personally or through the business and uh, or what he's seen others struggle with and uh, i also have uh, uh, in order to open this even further going down more south to uh, um, uh, uh, argentina there is a uh, uh, Carlos Maslaton. Uh, he used to be a politician in the years 2000 uh, and is now a Bitcoiner. Uh, and he kind of just spreads the word about Bitcoin. And uh, he is uh, so confirmed for the documentary. And he has a lot of these stories. Uh, and he was uh, very excited with the with the way I was pre presenting the project and the kind of stories that I'm looking for. He was excited to be able to share these kind of things, um, even saying that it would go beyond the politically correct. So, uh, so I mean, for him to say this it means he was quite excited with the with the story, uh, which is which is great because you know that's the content I'm looking for. I told him, "Oh, look, I'll have some questions because, of course, I you know want this to go a certain direction, but I'll also have a lot of open end questions where you can just go and tell whatever story you want to tell." And he said, "Great." <laughs> so you know that's uh, just how I'm trying to build my network is through reaching out to different people mm -hmm. that were involved, are involved, have some experience there and can just share their view. Uh, and it's great to be able to also include people that are Bitcoiners uh, because they can really share this yeah. um, perspective, but it would be great to also involve people that are, well, the opposite and that are part of uh, these actors that are trying to block it or slow down that adoption because it has to be a balanced conversation uh, especially yeah. That, yeah. yeah yeah and especially that you know what we want to do is understand their arguments and then debunk them and show well that's actually not true <laughs> you know and but you know i say it with such confidence because I spent a lot of time researching it and so on, right? So that's, you know, my opinion speaking. Now in the film, I had to be able to uh, pass the same message, but only based on the actual facts that were found. 
And this will be quite a challenge and I think a good way to learn a lot and uh, yeah. uh, develop, you know, my way of thinking about a lot of things as well. Yeah. And you're right, you know, I mean, also when I talk to uh, to Samson, I think he says, of course, you know, it's important to go to Bitcoin conferences and you know, Bitcoin communities and all these events where a bunch of Bitcoiners are, but I think... Uh, for him, also, it's important to have contrarian opinions, like really people like this is the only way you can interact and have, you know, would it be panel discussions or panel discussions? I think are the, one of the best because you have like, you know, totally contrarian people with totally different <laughs> understanding of the reality or, um, uh, or or values or whatever or, or thoughts or, or I don't know the way they, they, they explain things. And I think it's it's always good to have a contrarian uh, a point of view or, or um, perspective. Uh, then you can somehow di dissect it and then, uh, yeah, and, and come to a hopefully, you know, um, uh, good conclusion of all. Uh, so, yeah, we are almost at the end. Um, Pierre, um, are there any, is there anything which uh, we should have mentioned? Uh, anything you want to like um, uh, emphasize or? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I can just uh, plug a bit more the fact that, you know, in order for this to work, uh, we need we need the community you know and uh, that's the effort that i'm that i'm doing now it's uh you know, just be able to market this as much as possible because i think it's a great like a great mission but i think it's it's hard to think of a of a better story to tell that bitcoiners would be able to back because we've already heard so much of the other stuff including what i put in my first film you know we've heard it through so many different uh means whether it's podcasts i mean whatever it is i think uh here we have the chance of uh um really exposing uh some of these uh um you know um inequalities that exist and present them while advertising Bitcoin. And the best is if we do it all together, you know? So uh, yeah, whether you can contribute through Geyser or if you, someone wants to be an individual investor in the project and join the project directly as executive producer or something, then just, just reach out. I mean, you're more than welcome. We're looking for help and, uh, and anyone can contribute, even if it's just research or anything, just, just reach out to us. Uh, you can do that either on Twitter, so myself, Pierre Corbin, or you can find the page of The Great Reset Films on the website, thegreatresetfilm.com. Um, yeah, and there's all our contacts there. Well, um, it was a great, fascinating fa conversation, uh, Pierre. Uh, really want to wish you all the best, and uh, we're going to stay in touch, definitely. Uh, I'll contact you uh, sometime soon in the next several weeks. But um, uh, let's just stay in touch and, and maybe even, you know, maybe in the f near future, have even a, I'm thinking of a panel discussion with you together, uh, which would might also, you know, somehow boost the effect of, of, of the branding or the, the promotion of your, of your film. So, uh, yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah, I think we're, anyway, we're just going to move on with the research. So in a few weeks from now, I'll have even better stories to tell. <laughs> oh, Pierre, it was really, uh, you did a lot of research. I, I really enjoyed the, the first, the first First part uh, the rise of bitcoin and i can't wait really to um, are you are you planning to do a like a like a separate like a like a um, like a succinct like teaser a trailer for eventually f uh, like a three minute or five minute teaser a trailer for 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 the for the fight of for the us dollar i mean the next movie yeah but i think this will be when we're already in the production process okay, okay gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. i think for for now it's better to just uh, gather this information and present it so that people just follow it, you know, and understand what's actually happening. And the more we can share, the better. But so, but the trailer will come, of course, of course. Amazing. Well, I can't, I can't wait to to see that. Uh, well, uh, Pierre Corbin, uh, can I pronounce? Do I pronounce your name correctly, Corbin or Corbin? Uh, yeah. So in French, it's Corbin. So yeah, you are pronouncing it <laughs> okay. properly. Uh, but you know, you can say it however you want. <laughs> awesome, Pierre. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take yeah, care. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thank you very much. Ciao. Well, that was a amazing conversation. Um, anyway, with Pierre Cor Cor Corbin, uh, check out his great reset. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes. Uh, like, subscribe, follow him on Twitter, uh, on YouTube. Uh, 
support him through Geyser or in any shape or form, would it be you know technical expertise, connections, networking? I think this man, Pierre Corbin, should be promoted, should be supported in any shape or form. There's of course other people who, who also have also done uh, some movies and and films, documentaries, great documentaries. But I think um, this could be really the, the litmus test, uh, a challenge. Uh, where the tipping point is coming to a culminating point where you know the pain point has reached uh, you know and and uh, within a lot of people uh, with a, you know on a monetary economical existential structural level emotional level and i think this film can can really reach uh, maybe not you know hundreds of millions but at least you know tens of millions of people eventually and uh yeah uh please share this video uh make sure you you know, if you want to just dip, you know, if you, if you have never uh, had anything to do with Bitcoin, uh, download yourself a mobile wallet just for the start of it. Or if you're doing it for someone else, download Moon Wallet. It's the easiest, most user-friendly, most, you know, um, uh, user-friendly uh, mobile wallet, Bitcoin wallet. It, it's got on-chain and lightning. It's easy. It's self-explanatory. And uh, and voila, you know, you just you just send a few sets and and that's it, you know, without any, any intermediaries, without any bureaucracy, without any headache. And uh, that's how you, I guess, you know, inspire and, and, and educate also people like this. This is this is how easy it is, you know, right? You can even send one set, you know, like one hundred millionth of a, of a Bitcoin. So you don't need a whole Bitcoin, right? So this is, this is something that most uh, a lot of people uh, don't know. So, uh, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever on YouTube. Uh, uh, give me a like if you liked it. Uh, give me a feedback, a comment. And uh, eventually I'll and give me some suggestions if you want to have more of these interviews or panel discussions, uh, suggest some names and I can try to coordinate a uh, panel discussion for next time. Well, thank you so much again. My name is Kevin Davani of the Kevin Davani Connection Show and Bitcoin is the evolution. Um, I'll see you soon. Bye.